क्वेश्चन नंबर 166 कंस्ट्रक्टेड ब्रोंकियोल्स इज टू एस्थमा डैमेज्ड एल्वियोलर वॉल्स इज टू कंप्लीट द एनालॉजी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू रेस्पिरेटरी डिसऑर्डर्स एंड द ऑप्शंस गिवन आर सिलिकोसिस प्लूरेसी एम्फाइसिमा एंड एस्बेस्टोसिस एंड द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर 3 एम्फाइसिमा Emphysema is a disorder characterized by destruction of walls of alveoli producing abnormally large spaces that remain filled with air even after exhalation so this damaged alveolar walls is to emphysema option number 1 silicosis and option number 4 asbestosis cannot be a correct answer because these are occupational respiratory disorders Whereas option number two, pleurisy is also an incorrect option. Pleurisy refers to inflammation of the tissues that lines the lungs and the chest cavity. So the correct answer to this question is option number three. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number one sixty seven says, oxygen depth is a phenomenon that occurs due to, and the options given are depletion of fructose stores, sudden heavy muscular exercise. excessive hemoglobin saturation with oxygen and the last option is release of more carbon dioxide to epithelial cells during muscular exercise there is rise in physiological demand for oxygen and the leftover oxygen is used as a reserve during muscular exercise to compensate for increased oxygen demand so the correct answer to this question that oxygen depth is a phenomena that occurs due to the second option sudden heavy muscular exercise is a correct answer to our question because during heavy muscular exercise there will be increase or rise in the physiological oxygen demand in our body option number 1 depletion of fructose stores is an incorrect option option number 3 and 4 that is excessive hemoglobin saturation with oxygen is an incorrect option because during muscular exercise when there is increase demand for oxygen there would be dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin there would be unloading of oxygen from hemoglobin and a saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen the last option release of more carbon dioxide to epithelial cells is also an incorrect option and the correct answer to this question is option number 2 now let's move on to the next question question number 168 all of the following are true regarding bpg except bpg stands for Two three bisphosphoglycerate. This BPG combines with hemoglobin, which makes the hemoglobin bind less tightly at the heme group sites. So, greater the level of BPG, more will be. the unloading of oxygen from hemoglobin now let's read the options the very first option given is bpg combines with hemoglobin affecting its affinity for oxygen and as it is a correct statement this cannot be a correct answer to our question because bpg combines with hemoglobin and higher the level of bpg higher will be the unloading of oxygen from hemoglobin the next statement is increase in level of bpg causes more oxygen to unload from hemoglobin and as it is also a correct statement this cannot be a correct answer to our question third statement says fetal hemoglobin binds with bpg less strongly than adult hemoglobin and it is also a correct statement so cannot be a correct answer. answer to our question and because fetal hemoglobin binds with bpg less strongly so it has higher affinity for oxygen so fetal hemoglobin binds to oxygen with higher affinity in comparison to adult hemoglobin the last statement is increased in level of bpg increases oxyhemoglobin formation and as it is an incorrect statement this is a correct answer to our question because increase in bpg level leads to unloading of oxygen from hemoglobin and not formation of oxyhemoglobin so the correct answer is option number 4 now let's move on to the next question question number 169 a temporary blood vessel which shunts blood from the pulmonary trunk into the aorta during fetal life is and the options given are ligamentum arteriosum foramen ovale ductus arteriosus and the last option is fossa ovalis 
and the correct answer to this question is option number 3 ductus arteriosus is a temporary blood vessel which shunts blood from pulmonary trunk into the aorta during fetal life as you can see here this is ductus arteriosus which is open in fetal heart and this ductus arteriosus gets closed in newborn heart it closes after birth in newborn heart leaving a remnant known as ligamentum arteriosum. So, option number one is an incorrect option because it is a remnant of ductus arteriosus in a newborn heart. The next option is foramen ovale and fossa ovalis and these are incorrect option. In fetus, foramen ovale allows flow of oxygenated blood from right to left atrium. Whereas in newborn heart, this foramen ovale is closed and its remnant is known as fossa ovalis. So, the correct answer to this question is option number 3. Now, let's move on to the next question. Question number 170. Nearly one third filling of the ventricles occurs during atrial contraction that lasts for and the options given are 0 0.5 second, 0 0.1 second, 0 0.4 second and 0 0.7 second. Now, in a complete cardiac cycle, this is atrial systole and during atrial systole there is one third filling of ventricles that occurs during the stage and it lasts for about 0.1 second and this is followed by ventricular systole for about 0.3 second and then followed by joint diastole of about 0.4 second. So, the complete cardiac cycle is of 0.8 seconds duration. And the correct answer to this question is option number 2, 0.1 second. The very first option, 0.5 second, is an incorrect option. And option number 3, 0.4 second, is also incorrect because joint diastole lasts for about 0.4 second. And the last option is 0.7 second. And this is also an incorrect option because atrial diastole lasts for about 0.7 second. So, the correct answer to this question is option number 2. Now, let's move on to the next question. Mm -hmm. 